It has come to my attention through the comments section that quite a few of my viewers are Australian. So, g'day. I have also taken note of the two major things that are regularly brought up by citizens of the land down under. Firstly, RAAF, not RAAF. I am kind of surprised I've never actually come across the pronunciation before, but hey, thanks for the correction, because it is much easier to say that way. The second request slash demand is for me to make a video on the following aircraft. The Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation's CA-15, unofficially nicknamed the Kangaroo. To provide a bit of basic background, prior to the Second World War, Australia recognised that in the event of another major conflict, as seemed likely at the time, they could not rely on supplies of modern aircraft being available for purchase. It was therefore considered prudent to build up the indigenous aeronautic industry, both to build aircraft under licence and to develop homegrown designs, should the fears of not being able to obtain aircraft for home defence come to pass. This proved wise, and with Japan's attack on Pearl Harbour in December 1941, and subsequent conquest of a huge portion of the Pacific region, Australia found itself effectively on the front line. The Australian Commonwealth Aircraft Company, CAC for short, did sterling work both building mainstay aircraft for the RAAF, like the Beaufort, and their own fighter, the CAC Boomerang series. Before people start yelling in the comments, yes, I will do the boomerang one day. Anyway, the success of CAC in designing and building their own fighter inspired them to continue. While the boomerang had proven a tough and capable aircraft in service, no one was in any doubt that they had been outclassed by the current Japanese fighters in aerial combat. What was needed was a cutting edge design, second to none, that would also double as a long-range bomber escort. In 1943, the RAAF gave the go-ahead to CAC to develop the new fighter. Despite the final layout the CA-15 would have, leading to comparison to the P-51 Mustang, in fact the initial design was much more closely modelled on the German Fokker Wolf 190. Chief designer of the CA-15, Fred David, was extremely impressed by the assessments being made of the then new German fighter, and it was this that provided his inspiration. His initial design intended to use a radial engine like the FW190, principally the huge Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wasp, which really shouldn't be a surprise, because Fred David, full name Friedrich David, was an Austrian Jewish refugee who had previously worked for Heinkel. He had also helped develop the Mitsubishi A5M Claude fighter and the D3A Val dive bomber for Japan before the war. With his successful boomerang as well, it's safe to say that Fred David knew a thing about radial engine combat aircraft design. And incidentally, if you've watched my videos on the Fokker D21 or the Kulhoven FK58, you'll probably be having deja vu on Jewish aero engineers fleeing the Nazis and creating aircraft for their enemies. Anyway, unfortunately, while the Australians would prove capable of designing and building the airframes of modern aircraft, they had a problem that has bedeviled so many promising designs. Engine supply. The CA-15 was initially hoped to have the Pratt & Whitney R2800-21 double wasp the same as was used in the P-47 Thunderbolt. This would have a turbocharger in the rear fuselage and produce 2,000 horsepower. But in mid-1943, CAC was informed this engine wouldn't be available, and so redesigned the Kangaroo to use the R-2800 10W, as used in the F-6 Hellcat, and which produced 2,300 horsepower. Unfortunately, this engine utilised superchargers instead of a turbocharger, and meant that the CA-15 would no longer be a high-altitude fighter, instead specialising in mid-to-low level combat. The aircraft's projected performance with the 10W was estimated to be a maximum speed of 365 mph at sea level, 436 mph at 25,000 feet, and that it would have an initial climb rate of 4,200 feet per minute. 
On top of this, development was further slowed when CAC was granted a license to produce the North American Mustang. After all, the Mustang was en route to becoming one of the Allies' key fighter aircraft, and getting them into service with the RAAF in numbers was more important than an aircraft that was still some way from service. Fred David persisted, but again engine issues cropped up. In May 1944, with the prototype already being constructed, the team was told that the Double Wasp 10W was no longer available. Instead, they would have to use the R2800-57, which again used a turbocharger, necessitating another fuselage redesign to fit it. This once again slowed down the project, though it wasn't all bad news. With the 57, which could produce 2,800 horsepower, the CA-15 was expected to be capable of 400 miles per hour at sea level, 480 miles per hour at 28,000 feet, and an initial climb of 5,700 feet per minute. Impressive. In August, the prototype was about 50% complete when, in a theme you will no doubt now be expecting, CAC got told that the Double Wasp 57 would not be available to them. In fact, no Pratt & Whitney engine would be. So the team set about looking for another engine for their aircraft. They found it in the Rolls-Royce Griffin 125 that was then under development. The use of the water-cooled Griffin entailed a major redesign of the prototype, but David and the CAC team did a remarkable job. It was at this point that the superficial similarity to the P-51D came about. With its teardrop canopy, underbelly air scoop, square-clipped wingtips, and initially intended armament of 650 caliber Browning heavy machine guns, the CA-15 certainly looks like a beefed-up Mustang. But in fact, as this long-winded discussion on the aircraft's origins I hope makes clear, that similarity is very much coincidental, despite my clickbait title. By early 1945, the CA-15 prototype was ready, simply waiting for the new Griffin engine to be delivered. This was projected to produce 2,440 horsepower, and was expected to make the CA-15 capable of a rather astounding maximum speed of 405 miles per hour at sea level, and potentially 495 miles per hour at 26,000 feet. Guess what happened next? Rolls-Royce said that the Griffin 125 wasn't going to be available until late 1945. In fact, they eventually cancelled it, but this was in the future, and ultimately not a concern for the Aussie team. They wanted an engine, and they wanted it now. So, they got two Griffin 61s on loan for fitting in the CA-15. This engine, the same as fitted to the Spitfire Mark 14, produced a maximum power output of 2,035 horsepower at 7,000 feet. With this, finally, the CA-15 got airborne on March 4th, 1946. The aircraft needed a surprisingly few number of tweaks to improve performance, and once handed over to the RAAF's test pilots in July, the CA-15 was reported to be an excellent aircraft, with great handling and superb visibility for the pilot. With the Griffin 61, the CA-15 had a maximum speed of 368 miles per hour at sea level, 448 miles per hour at 26,400 feet, and 432 miles per hour at 32,000 feet. Initial climb rate was 4,900 feet per minute, and ceiling was just about 40,000 feet. The aircraft earned its unofficial nickname of Kangaroo after the landing gear struts were overpressurized, causing the aircraft to bounce on landing, but this was rectified. Flight testing was delayed when on December 10th, the aircraft was forced to make an emergency landing because of a hydraulics failure damaging the underbelly air scoop and radiators. Though the damage was not serious, repairs took some time to complete, and the CA-15 didn't fly again until May 1948. It was now that the aircraft achieved its highest recorded speed, 502 miles per hour, achieved after making a shallow dive. But, as with so many of the late war super prop aircraft, the CA-15's fate had long been sealed. The reason for the long delay in repairing the aircraft after its prang was that it was already obsolete. In 1946, the RAAF had received its first jet fighter, the de Havilland Vampire. 
And while David's team were still tinkering with the CA-15, the new jets very much showed how the future was going to be. In 1950, Rolls-Royce requested the return of their loaned Griffin engines. With no need for the aircraft with the RAAF, and the project essentially being now little more than a vanity one for CAC, the CA-15 was scrapped. Which was, quite frankly, stupid, but seems to have been all too common with aircraft of this type and era. The pity really is that the aircraft didn't get its initial engine layout. Had this occurred, the CA-15 may well have become the primary fighter bomber of the RAAF throughout the Pacific in 1944-45. And instead of the might-have-been Aussie Mustang, we would be talking about the Aussie Thunderbolt. Or even, dare I say it, the Aussie Focke-Wulf. <laughs>